Frequently, the proper accommodations are not being made for students when it comes to personalization and education in the 21st century. Hi, my name is Lizzie Trago, and I'm here to talk about personalized education. In the industrial era of the 19th century, education was all but individualized for every student. This is due to the factory model of education that's still primarily in use to this day. This factory model demeaned and desensitized the value of individuality for every single student. According to Audrey Waters in her article, The Invented History of the Factory Model of Education, she explains how the factory model of education prompts the industrial norms of society by stating that assembling masses of students, raw material, to be processed by teachers, workers, in a centrally located school factory. This excerpt basically mirrors how the factory model of education just reflects how the factory the factory work happens, so it prepares the students of the education system to go to work in the factory system in the future. Um, and this shows how the individual individual students are all have their different individualities and preferences, and they all learn their different ways. And they go into school where they're all taught the same exact way, and they don't have any individual learning styles or anything like that. And they all come out the same person, ready to in, ready to enter the factory workforce. And this was initially beneficial in the 19th century because they needed everyone to be the same to work in the factories to do that repetitive job. But into the 21st century, it's actually harming our students now because we have more specialized jobs that need to be filled in the workforce, but all of our students are the same. And one way that personalization has been implemented over the past two centuries is through the implementation of technology in classrooms. So this allows students to work at their own paces. So if they, it's harder for them to grasp the concept or to really understand it, they can work at a slower pace. And if it's easier for them to understand the concept, they can work at a faster pace so they're not held behind by the, by the students that need a little bit more time with the concepts. According to Megan Macy and Aaron M. Hammer in their article, Flexible and Personalized Non-Classroom-Based Education is on the Rise, they state that students enjoy increased flexibility and opportunities for individualized education based on their individual needs and preferences throughout non-classroom-based education. So non-classroom-based education just compiles technology-based education, which allows for personalization again, and then work-study programs, which allows students to have more experience in the workforce or whatever field they kind of want to go into or they think they want to go into. And there's also independent study programs, which allows you to be more isolated and, again, work at your own pace. Um, some people don't agree with the personalized education system simply for the fact that they think that if students are trusted and responsible for making their own decisions and schedules, they're not going to make it challenging enough for themselves. However, that is to the student's own discretion, whatever they want to do with their future, and whether or not they want to challenge themselves to be a better person. Another way that specialization is implemented in our culture today is through magnet schools. So magnet schools have a specialized curriculum for their students where you can have a, a certain theme or focus such as math, science, fine arts, performing arts, or anything like that. There's one school in Central Florida, Boone High School, for example, that has a magnet program for criminal justice, finance, and law. So if you want to go into that area, um, joining a magnet program like that is a really good idea. Um, according to the Florida Department of Education, there's almost 550,000 students participating in magnet programs in Florida um, in the 2013 and 2014 school year. And if you do the math, this is roughly 6.7% of students attending magnet schools. And this is growing due to their specialization and how that really helps the student's academic success rate increase over time. And that student academic success rate increasing is shown by this chart from the Public Citizens for Children and Youth Organization. It shows how neighborhood schools, which are just normal public schools, have a graduation rate of 64%, and then magnet schools have a graduation rate of 95%, which is significantly higher due to their specialization of their curriculum for their students. So this just shows how specialization for every student really allows people to be really interested in what they're learning and want to focus more in class, because that does hold their interest even more, and allows them to join a career that, has more, that they have more passion in, and then that specialized curriculum helps out. So personalized education is a really good idea to be implemented more further in the future. Thank you. What questions do you have? Um, thanks, Liz. How, do, how did you um, select the strategies you're going to use to gather the information when you researched? So I, wanted, I knew I wanted to do historical because I knew over time that, that, that the education system wasn't changing because I knew the factory model was like this. There was like rows and everyone was like 
learning the same way and we're still kind of doing that today so I wanted to point out how that had to be changed through the personalization techniques and then I wanted to use futuristic to show how that should be changed into the future. But tell me about the strategies of how you gathered, once you determine that, how did you then gather the information for those two lenses? I used the EBSCO host and then I used, I found a book online about personalizing education that showed a lot about the historical aspect of the factory model of education, which I found really interesting. Would you, personally as a student, would you like education to be more personalized? In high school, because it will be in college. Right? Yes, of course. And how do you address the concerns that people say, well, there must be a standard that you have to do? Everybody needs to be at a certain level. Like well, everyone's different, so you can't apply standard to everybody because everyone has a different preference. All right, thank you.